All right, class, let me be the first to wish you a happy Constitution Day. Now, if you're thinking, what on earth is that? Well, that's what we're about to go over. So you should be watching this on Thursday, and Thursday is Constitution Day. And so every year in Paulding County, we take time from our normal unit on uh, Europe, and instead we're going to take a look at the Constitution. Now, if you're asking, what is the Constitution? The Constitution is a written document that is the foundation for all the laws that we have in our country. It's the foundation for how our, it sets the rules for how our government operates. So whether that is the executive branch, the legislative branch, or the judicial branch, it sets the rules for how our government operates. It sets the rules for how we elect a president of the United States, or we elect a congressman, or we elect a senator. All the freedoms that we think about, think about it. Oh, the freedom of speech, freedom of the press, freedom of religion, the right to bear arms. Those freedoms are spelled out in the Constitution. Now, if you think about it, if the way our government operates and the freedoms that we have and the laws that are in place in our country and the way our country runs, if it's all because of the Constitution, then we should probably learn something about it and actually know something about the Constitution. So, here we go. Now, I've talked to your classmates, your in-person classmates, and for most of your in most of your classmates, everything that I heard was, I actually really don't know much about the Constitution. I actually don't know much about the way, what our, how our government works, or how our government, what, what, are, what, are, what are the branches of government? I've actually mentioned branches of government, and most of your classmates knew maybe one branch of government, but very few knew all three. So I thought, okay, you know what? We've got three videos today for Constitution Day. The first video is going to focus on the branches of government and how they operate. And by the way, when I'm talking about how the branches of government operate, it's all in the Constitution. All right, so are you guys ready? Well, even if you're not ready, we're still going to do this anyway, so you might as well get ready. All right, guys? Here we go. Let's take a look at, let's take a look at the Constitution, and in this case, the branches of government. And because a lot of students said, oh, I really don't know a lot about how the government works, we're doing the very basic, we're kind of doing the first step in understanding our government. You'll do other steps later on throughout your middle school career and then into high school. But for now, these are the basics in sixth grade. So we have three branches of government. So when we say, oh, there's three branches of government. Let me see if I move out of the way there. If we have three branches of government. We don't mean that the government is a tree. When we say three branches, we mean that there are three divisions of our government, or three groups that make up our government, okay? The legislative branch, the executive branch, and the judicial branch. And by the way, I put these in order the way they're written in the Constitution. So the Constitution starts out by telling you how the legislative branch works, then how the executive branch should work, and then how the judicial branch should work. So we are going to look in order as well. All right, so here we go. The legislative branch. So what do we need to know about the legislative branch? Well, number one, this branch makes the laws. So all laws that are in our country today are made by the legislature. They are made by the, exec by the legislative branch. Now, when I'm going to talk about the branches of government, I'm going to be talking about our capital, Washington, D.C., because what they do affects the entire country. Every state has its own local government, so our, our local state government is in Atlanta, and they have a legislature, but those laws only affect Georgia. We're going to talk about the legislature in Washington, D.C., and we're going to do the same for all three branches. So this branch makes the laws. The legislature is called Congress. By the way, this building right here is the Congress building. So if you were to go to Washington, D.C., and you saw this, this is the building where Congress meets. So Congress is our legislature. Now, <clears throat> Congress is made up of two houses. Now, before I even go into the names and what they do, house does not mean that I'm walking in Washington, D.C., and I look and go, oh, hey, there's a house, and there's another house. No, house is a word that just means Congress is made up of two groups of members, right? Or two groups of, we could say, representatives, because they're going to be from different states. So Congress is made up of two groups of members. I think that's the best way to put it. Number one, 
the House of Representatives. That's the first house in Congress. The second house is called the Senate. So our first group is the House of Representatives. Our second group is the Senate. Now, what I think is really neat about the way this works is that when the Constitution was being written, our founding fathers, and by the way, when you hear the term founding fathers, founding fathers are going to mean these are the guys who first established the country, first established the Constitution. So when I say founding fathers, I'm talking about guys like George Washington, John Adams, Thomas Jefferson, James Madison. All right? I'm talking about those guys. Those guys, and by the way, I, there's a whole lot of men that I did not mention as well, but they are called the founding fathers of our country. Well, when they're trying to work on putting together a legislature during the Constitution, uh, Constitutional Convention, there was a problem. The larger states who had lar larger state, not meaning area, but population, the states that had the larger populations, they were saying, hey, wait a second, you know what? We want representation. In other words, the number of members that get to be in the legislature, we want it based on how large our population is. So the larger the population, the more members you get. Well, the small states looked at that and said, well, no, that's terrible because we'll never have any power at all because we have such a small population. The smaller states, they said, hey, you know what? Everyone should have the same number of representatives. Well, the larger states looked at that and said, hey, you know what? We don't like that because we have issues that are different from small states. And so those small states aren't going to care about our issues and we'll end up getting hurt. Well, what's neat is because you had those two different groups, we created two uh, houses or two members. All right, now hold on one second. All right, Mr. McGee is back. So let's go ahead and continue. And our clock is working, awesome. So what I was saying was what was neat is this. I had to sneeze, so that's why I had to go ahead and cut the camera. What's awesome is the House of Representatives this first house, this first group, is based on population. So there are members from all 50 states in the House of Representatives, but the number of members that each state gets is based on the size of the population of their country. So California has 53 members in the House of Representatives because they have the largest population in the country. And as you go on down the list, you'll see the states with the larger populations have more members than the states with the smaller populations. By the way, we here in Georgia have 14 members in the House of Representatives. Now, why did I say this is neat? Because you have the House, but then you also have the second group, which is the Senate. In the Senate, every state has the same number of representatives, two. So if there are 50 states in the United States, and each state has two representatives, or two members, or let's just say two senators, be the easiest way so we don't confuse ourselves. So each state gets two senators in the Senate, well, there's 100 members of the Senate. 50 states times two senators, 100. The House, because it's based on population, the House has 435 members in the House. So each state is able, if you think about it, the larger states, they got to relax because they at least have one part of Congress, one part of their legislature that kind of caters to larger states. And the smaller states are happy because they have one part of the legislature that caters to smaller states. Now, why is that important? Because for a bill, a bill would be not a bill like, hey, you need to pay this, but when someone wants to make a law, they write, they write it down, like, here's the law that I want to, here's the law that I want to make, and we call it a bill. Well, that bill has to be voted on and passed in the House of Representatives and in the Senate. So it doesn't matter if a senator proposes a law, it has to pass in the Senate and the House of Representatives. If a member of the House wants to pass a law, wants um, wants a law to be created, it has to be that bill has to be voted on in the House and in the Senate. And if it passes both of those houses, then it goes to the president's desk, and the president can either sign it, sign the bill, and the bill becomes a law, or he can veto the bill, meaning he rejects the bill, and the bill does not come a law, and it's sent back to Congress. So that's the legislative branch. Think about it, really important job. All right, executive branch. Now, if we step back for a second, you'll see this is the White House. So that should tell you something about the executive branch to begin with. So the executive branch, this branch enforces the laws. 
we're taking a look at our time. Sorry, I thought we got, I thought something messed with our time. So, executive branch. This branch enforces the laws. So, if you think about enforce, what does that mean? Well, to enforce the laws means their the job of the executive branch is to make sure that people are following the laws. The head of this branch is the president of the United States. So, when we vote for a president of the United States, we are voting for the head of the executive branch. The person who's going to head the branch that makes sure that people are following the laws of the country. By the way, the president does more than just enforce laws. The president is the head over the military. The president has so many different functions, but I'm just focusing on the executive branch. So don't think that's all the president does. The president can sign or veto a bill from Congress. So remember when that bill passes both houses of the legislature, both houses of Congress? The president has the power to sign or veto a bill. Now, what is neat about this is the head of this branch, the President of the United States, obviously, well, the executive branch is huge. If you're talking about enforcing laws, there are so many different types of laws. So there are trade laws, and that's one department. There's criminal law, that's a completely different department. There are rules and laws about how energy is used in our country, talking about oil and natural gas, that's a completely different department. There are laws about how our state and national parks are run. Well, that's a totally different department. Well, if you think about it, I just named, I just named a few departments. What, four departments, I think, I named? There are more than four. No president could try to run each and every department by himself. So what he does is he appoints members. He, sorry, he appoints members. He appoints a person to run each department, to be the head or the manager of each department. And then those managers, which we call secretaries, they answer to the president. So they report to the president saying, hey, here's what's happening in my department. And the president can make final decisions on different things that are happening in each department. But he has different people that he trusts and he appoints to run those departments and then answer to him. All right, so that's, that's, kind of, that's a little bit, that's a little intro to what the president does as head of the executive branch. All right, now on to the judicial branch. All right, judicial branch. This branch judges the laws. So if you look here, most students don't recognize this building. This is the Supreme Court. So this branch judges the laws. The Supreme Court is the most powerful court in the US. The US has a system of state courts and federal courts, so let's talk about that. So if we're judging the laws, you have to have a standard by which you judge. Well, the judicial branch is supposed to judge laws based on the Constitution. So the Constitution is our foundation for laws. So if a case comes to the Supreme Court, and let's say someone's saying, well, this law that was passed in my state, or this law that was passed in Washington, D.C., this law violates or goes against the Constitution. Well, it's the Supreme Court's job to judge, all right, is this law constitutional? Does it actually follow the Constitution? Or does it violate or reject the Constitution? Does it go against what the Constitution says? So that, the judicial system is important because it's supposed to judge when people come with a different, with a lawsuit saying this law is unconstitutional. So the court is supposed to look at the Constitution and then judge whether or not the law that is being argued is actually constitutional or not. So, Supreme Court is the most powerful court in the land. I'm focusing on the Supreme Court, but I also want us to know there's more than just the Supreme Court. So the U.S. has a system of state courts and federal courts. What's neat about this is every state has its own local state court system. Now, once your case moves up to the very highest court in each state, then you can move to the federal courts. And the federal courts, they cover, they have power over multiple states. And the Supreme Court, which is the highest court out of the federal courts, the most powerful court in the land, they have power over all 50 states. All right. Now, I know that was a lot that I threw at you, but guess what? This is on YouTube, so you can pause and go back and maybe slow it down in case there's something that you didn't understand. Also, I'll be in conference if you have any questions about these three branches of government. Your assignment for this video, because remember, there are three videos. Your assignment's pretty easy for this one, okay? The Supreme Court is made up of nine judges. We call them justices, so nine justices. Your job 
is to find the first, in the, actually, let's use it. Let's see if Mr. McGee can actually talk at this time using English. You ready? Here we go. Your job is to look up the names of each of the nine justices. I want to know who are the, who are, what are the names of the nine justices? Who are these people who are part of the Supreme Court? There are nine members. I want you to give me the first and last name of all nine members and submit that to me. Okay? That's your job. It's an easy assignment, but most students can't name one justice on the Supreme Court. That's why I want you to look these up, okay? So, look up the names of the justices of the Supreme Court, and then send that to me. And that is your assignment for this first video. All right, take care, guys.